morning, family. How's everyone this morning? We're starting a new week here. The Lord has been good. He's been blessing us, ministering to us, teaching us, showing us the Spirit, His Son, Himself, His glory, His honor. What a what a majestic and wonderful God we have. What a what a pleasure, what a blessing it is to be able to come into his presence with thanksgiving and praise and to be one with our our God. It's it's my honor, it's my uh it's a blessing for me to be able to share the gospel with you, to share the word of God with you, to bring you bring you truth, bring you scripture so that you can trust and and rely on our king of kings to help you today to give you the opportunities to bless him to shower him with the praise that he so richly deserves if i could i would like to start off in isaiah 12 by giving you some scripture to think about, to consider dealing with Moses. And you say, where in the world does that come into play here? Well, if I might, let me share with you some things. If you recall when Moses first found God uh, in, in the Old Testament, in Genesis, when when he was in the land, when he had been thrown out of Egypt and he was struggling and going through the through the barren lands and he finally made his way down to Midian and he was led, was directed, was called by God to come up into the mount. And when he came up to the mountain what did he saw see? He saw a burning bush, and it so it so struck him as being very unusual that he continued to get closer and closer and closer because he saw the burning bush that was not burning. There was fire. There was there was evidence of a flame being. Uh, exhibited there around this bush, this burning bush, and he wanted to figure out what in the world was causing this bush to burn. And he kept getting closer and closer, and finally a voice spoke out and said, take off your shoes, for you are on holy ground. And he didn't argue. He didn't raise a ruckus. He didn't talk about how sharp the rocks were that he might be stepping on or anything else. He's on a mountain. He's not in the desert, so there wasn't soft sand. There was gravel and rocks and everything else, but he didn't complain. He took off his shoes. And when he took off his shoes, he met the Creator. And the Creator spoke with him and shared with him and talked with him. They formed a connection, and Moses met the God of the universe. He needed to know God. He needed to know the majesty that was related to God. He needed to see the burning bush, but no burning taking place. He needed to know that the presence of God was so significant that you didn't even wear your shoes. You took your shoes off. No protection was necessary for his feet because he was on holy ground. Here was the creator. Here was the God of all. And he was showing himself to his man, Moses. He was calling a man to be used for his service. 
and he was going to use him mightily. And that was the introduction to the Creator. Later, when nearly two million people were following Moses across the desert, and he went up to Mount Sinai, and the smoke and the fire and the rumblings and the clouds and the lightnings, it was such an awe-inspiring sight that when Moses said to the people, don't touch the mountain, don't even come near the mountain, there, there was no convincing them that, this, that that was a good thing to do. They were too afraid to even come near the mountain. And Moses went up by himself to be with his God, to talk with his God, to share with his God, to find out what God wanted him to do. And after 80 days of being in the presence of God, look it up, because it says he went up for 40 days, got the Ten Commandments, came down, broke the Ten Commandments because of the sin, and went back up for another 40 days. So 80 days of fasting, that doesn't happen unless God is part of the equation. Just not going to be. After 80 days, he came down, and being in the presence of God was so significant, changed Moses so much that his face shone so brightly that the people could not look on Moses' face. They begged him to please put a veil over his face so that they could be in his presence. That's because Moses had been in the presence of God. We have talked with God. We have prayed to God. We have felt his spirit ministering to us. But we have not been in his physical presence. There is coming a day when we will not have to worry about whether he hears our prayers or not, whether he knows who we are or not, whether we have the right to come before him or not. There's coming a day when we will stand in his presence and his light will shine so greatly upon you and I that we will glow in the presence of God. That is the day that's coming. That is the day that we're looking forward to, a day that no longer we need to pray to our God. It's going to be a day that we're in the presence of our God, a day that is going to be the most glorious day forever and ever and ever that we will ever experience. You and I, you and I will be in the presence of our Creator, of our God, Jehovah Almighty. We will be in His presence. And when that day comes, it will be so glorifying that you will not be able to say, oh, I need to write this down. I need to take notes about this. It will be absolutely beyond any comprehension that you could ever have. No notes will be have to be taken. No trying to remember what it's going to be like, because it's going to be like that forever. Forever and ever and ever, you're going to be in the presence of God. And when we are there, every single word, every single thought, every single visual eyeball experience that you'll have, the things that you and I will see, the things that we will feel, the things that we will smell, the very presence of God will be so awe-inspiring, that there will not be words that we could even think of 
that would give the proper expression for how much love we feel, how much love we express, how many glorious things that will take place. It will be beyond our mental comprehension. That is what awaits us. And in chapter 11, what we had learned was that Christ the King is coming back. And he's going to separate unto himself the people that are his. And they will come from all areas of this creation, this world, to one place, to one location, to worship the God Almighty on this earth. And that will take place in Israel. And so when we learned about that in chapter 11, we learned how he's going to start to call his people together. And there is a reason for that, because God wants to be with his people. He has called us to be his own. He has bought us. He has paid for us. He has chosen us because we put our faith in him. We have shown our faith in the God, the creator that created all of this for his glory and his honor. So that in chapter 12, it says, verse 1, And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Forever and ever and ever, I could say that for a while, all the things that you thought were separating you from the Father, from the Son, from the Holy Spirit. Every sin, everything that separated us is gone. It's in the past. It's no longer. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we can be before our Creator, clean, without sin, without blemish, without any imperfection whatsoever, with a, with a, no thought of evil in your mind, no thought of doing something wrong, just the pure joy of being in the presence of the Father in heaven forever and ever, and that joy will last forever and ever. You will never, ever, ever again think of this world and think of all the horrible things that have taken place whether they be bad, whether they be terrible. Some people have experienced terrible, horrible, horrendous things from body body, uh, not working correctly and being blind and being maimed and being halt, being mentally uh, unable to experience things that, that others have been. It's, it's all gone. It's all in the past. We will be in the presence of God, glorified by his presence, made special by his presence. Behold, God is my salvation. That's what you and I will say. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall we draw draw water out of the wells of salvation. Everything that you have ever needed, the, the ministry of the Spirit of God in your life will be complete, will be total. There will not be a single person that will be able to say, ooh, I need just a little more to drink. I need a little more to taste in my mouth. I need a little more of God. No, 
your satisfaction and my satisfaction will be total and complete because of the Spirit of God and how he wants to bless and minister to us. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. If you've ever wondered why you should open your mouth and praise God and sing songs to him and lift your hands with praise and glory, there will that question will never, ever come when you're standing in his presence. Your hands will fly up. Your mouth will open up. You will shout out praises and glories to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because it's so part of your spiritual nature that you won't be able to shut up your mouth. You will not find a reason not to lift your hands and not to praise the King of Kings. It will be you. You will stand in his presence forever and ever And you will look around and you will see a host innumerable, millions upon millions upon millions of people who have died and gone before. They will be surrounding you. They will love you and cherish you because of Christ's love in them for you and your love in Christ for them. It will be come. There will be no lack of God's grace, love, and mercy for anyone who will be in that place. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation, and in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord! Call upon his name! Declare his doings among the people! Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he is... For he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. If you think that Christians are the only ones that believe in God, trust me, that's not true. There are non-Christians. There are people who think or want to say that God doesn't exist, but because of the fact that their sin has blinded them, they would rather hide in the darkness than to shout out the name of God. Sin has crept into their life. Sin has blinded them. Sin has kept them shut up. Sin has done those things in their life that prevent them from giving praise and glory and honor to the King of Kings. But that's not going to happen forever, folks. That will not be the case in heaven. No sin present. Nothing. It will only be those who love and praise our God, who have given themselves to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, prayed and asked for his salvation, and have experienced the joy of the Lord in their life, who will stand in the presence of God and be able to give that joy and presence and experience back to him by shouting hallelujah by shouting and lifting up his name in praise and glory and hands lifted in praise and showing how much we love the Creator. And it will be mutual. The love fest that will take place is incomparable. You cannot even begin to think of how wonderful it's going to be. And there will be no darkness ever, ever again. The presence of God, your face will be like Moses, shining forever and ever and only getting closer and better because of you being close to the King of Kings. Done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. The earth itself will give praise back to God. 
cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Our God is in our midst. If you haven't been able to lift up and praise your hands and and raise them up to his glory, what is preventing you? What is holding you back? You should be so full of the joy of God that you cannot restrain yourself. And you will be doing that forever in heaven. You will be glorifying him and giving him praise and glory and giving him his due. And it will be mutual. The love that he has for us is never ending. He doesn't look at you and see sin. He sees Jesus in you. That's why when we die and get to heaven, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant, because it's what we've allowed Christ to do in us. When we walk with him daily, when we praise him, when we sing to him, it's just merely the baby steps of our life in coming to know our Savior forever. Don't let the things of this world tear you down. Don't let the things of this world destroy your joy in God. Let him hear your joy. Let him hear your love. Let him hear your voice today. Sing praises to him today because it's the start of an eternity that we're going to experience with our God. He is so worthy of all we have. Let us learn today to give praise and glory and honor to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen.